imagine one day you're sitting in your student office and your PhD supervisor or uh, your research methods lecturer or someone like that sends you a file. So uh, you're checking your email, ping, a new file comes in. And they say to you, well, I'd really like you to add some data to this file. So you download the file and you think, right, well, I'll just load it into SPSS and then everything will be fine. Uh, but then you look at it and they've sent you a bloody Excel file. Well, what are you going to do apart from obviously go and shoot them? Well, it turns out that it's very, very easy to deal with Excel files in SPSS. And I'm going to show you how to do it. So up on the screen here, we have an example of an Excel file. So imagine that this is the file that your supervisor or your tutor or whatever has sent you. So you can see it's laid out pretty much like an SPSS file. We've got some names of people down here, their dates of birth, and then some more uh, information relating to how many friends they have, how much alcohol they drink, how much income they make. So first of all, we have to get this into SPSS. And uh, to do that, we do this. In SPSS, all we need to do is to open a file like normal. So we go to the file menu and then open and then data. But then down here where it's normally looking for an SPSS file, what we need to do instead is to ask it to look for an Excel file. And then we just go and find the Excel file that we want to open. So this is the file uh, that I was just showing you on the screen a minute ago. So we ask it to open it. We get a little dialog box like this. And uh, essentially this allows us to choose a worksheet. In the Excel file that I had up there, there's three worksheets, but all the data we had was actually in the first one. So we can just ask it to, uh, to import sheet one. Now SPSS will only import one sheet at a time. So uh, if you've got more than one sheet, then that's a bit of a problem uh, and then we just click on OK and as you can see we get this lovely SPSS data file it looks very much like it did in Excel now if you looked at any of the earlier videos uh, which use the same data set you'll remember that we use this variable group uh, to specify what kind of job the person had whether they're a lecturer or a tutor now if they were a lecturer we gave them a 1 and if they were a student we gave them a 2 and uh, in Excel, we don't have any way of labeling these two things. So they just end up as numbers. So you will have to relabel them as one lecturer and two student. And if you don't really know what I'm doing, then go and watch the film about entering data and it will all become clear. So you've got the, these data. now. Let's say that your uh, your supervisor wanted you to add uh, a new variable to this data set because obviously academics are really lazy so they just go around getting their students to do everything for them. So we have some more data about how neurotic each person was. So we can create a new variable. We'll call it neurotic. And it's just going to involve scores that have no decimal places so we can reduce that to zero. And it's a scale variable. In other words, it's a, it's you know, continuous. We can just type some scores in here from our data set. Now notice how lots of our lecturers are scoring quite high on neuroticism. That's because all lecturers are a bit strange. So we've got our new variable in. Now we want to send this back to our supervisor or our lecturer. And he or she is obviously going to want an Excel file because they're really awkward. So you think, well, how am I going to save it as an Excel file? Well, again, that's really, really simple. All we have to do is go to the file menu, save as. And again, we don't want to save it as an SPSS file. So we just change it down here to an Excel file. The one you change it to will depend on which version of Excel you're using. I have the latest version, so I'm going to change it to an Excel 2007 file. Of course, by the time you watch this video, it might not be the latest version. There might be a new one, but there you go. And I'm going to call it Lecture Data 2008. Save. Now, because I already had that file, it's just asking me as normal whether I want to replace it, which I do. Now, 
Okay, back in Excel, we can now open this file and sure enough, it's now got our column of data from SPSS involving the neuroticism scores. So to sum up, it's pretty easy to import and export Excel files into SPSS. We just pretty much load them in as a normal data file and we pretty much save them out as an Excel file. It could not be easier.